contain database is a database that is isolated from other database and from the instance of SQL Server that hosts the databases. So SQL Server helps you to isolate the database from the instance in four ways. One, it maintains the metadata in the database instead of the master database. Two, all metadata are defined using the same collation. Three, user authentication can be performed by the database itself. So you won't need logins in this case, reducing the dependency of logins on the instance. The SQL Server environments like the DMVs and extents can act upon containment information. The Contain Database feature is currently available in partial contained state. A partially contained database is a contained database that allows you to use uncontained features. Some of the benefits that comes with partially contained databases are 1. It makes it easier to migrate the databases. So when you move databases, one of the problems that occurs is that some important information can be unavailable when the databases move from one instance to another. For example, login information stored within the instance instead of the database. When you move an uncontained database from one instance to another in SQL Server, this information is left behind. So you must identify the missing information and move it with your database to the new instance of SQL Server. Now, this process can be time consuming and sometimes you'll think you move a database successfully, but what happens is that when the application or user is trying to connect, they get this error, whoops, can't log in and then you're trying to figure out what happened. So partial containment solved this problem. So with a contained database, you can create what is called a contained user, which you'll learn in the upcoming module, which allows users to connect directly to the contained database. Now, this is a very significant feature in high availability and disaster recovery scenarios using the always on solution. So when the users are contained in the event of a failover, users would be able to connect to the secondary node without creating the logins on the secondary server. So you don't have to worry about users and application failing to connect if you ever have to fail over. Or you don't have to go and manually run procedures to remap login to users. Again, you'll understand more about logins and users in the upcoming module. So let's take a look at an example of how you can enable containment and create a contained database. The first step in creating a contained database is enabling containment at the instance level. So right click on the instance, select properties, select advanced, and then where it says enable contained databases, change the status from false to true, then select OK. So this is the procedure that was executed in the background where contain database authentication was set to 1. So to disable it, then we'll set 0 as the parameter. Now when you expand database, right click, new database, specify a name for the database, right? And then when you go on the options tab, you have the option to specify partial containment. Now if you generate script, so here it's setting the containment type as partial. So these are the files that would be created with your database. You may be wondering where all these alter statements came from. They are pretty much from the model database because all of these settings are enabled or disabled within the model database. So it pulls them from the model. In the next module coming up, we'll be taking a look at users and logins. And in that module, we'll be taking a look at how you can create contained users.